final details because of course uh, we understood that that release was under very specific uh, conditions uh, where are we in terms of the latest well we know uh, we understand that Jean-Pierre Bemba is still on ICC territory within their sort of domain and so that's probably at the ICC detention center in The Hague but he will be transferred here to Belgium which is where his wife and five children live and where he was originally arrested 10 years ago before the trial and his arrest uh, and transfer to The Hague all began. At the moment we don't know too much about it and the International Criminal Court have said that we will not see him as he leaves so we expect the first place we will see him after his release may be here in Brussels or somewhere else in Belgium. I suppose it really then does bring up a number of issues because, of course, he's been incarcerated for quite a number of years. Uh, but there are those who would say that he wasn't a regular prisoner in a regular prison. And once again, even though he's been released, he's uh, still going to have to be living under specific conditions. And so uh, where does his freedom uh, end and begin? And I imagine he may want to, at some point, return to the DRC. Well, exactly. Currently, he's still under a, another case related to his war crimes case and his crimes against humanity case. Those uh, charges, that, that conviction was overturned. He was acquitted last Friday. But there's still another case ongoing at the International Criminal Court regarding witness tampering that him and a number of other people are alleged to have done, conducted on the side of that case. And on July the 4th, there'll be another hearing on that where he will have to attend. The ICC has said that he can not speak publicly about that case in any way, that he must stay at the address that he's given them somewhere here in Belgium. We don't know it yet. We're trying to find that out. And that he must return to the International Criminal Court for that hearing and for any future hearings as well. This is a conditional release. They're calling it an interim release. He's still in the grasp of the International Criminal Court. Uh, but as you say, there is a suggestion that he may want to return back to the Democratic Republic of Congo. Joseph Kabila, one of his main political rivals, said yesterday that he will not stand in the upcoming elections in the DRC in December. So that might open the door for Jean-Pierre Bemba to return to DRC politics. In fact, as I understand, Jack, there was a recent poll, as uh, recent as last year, in fact, that placed uh, Bemba as uh, the third most popular candidate uh, should he have been available for elections. So it's certainly going to throw a spanner in the works, particularly, as you point out, uh, since uh, President Kabila will no longer be running in this year's poll. Has there been any official word uh, uh, from Kinshasa around uh, this overturning of that conviction? At the, uh, at the moment, there's not been too much said, and that's because he's not been released. I suppose everyone will wait to hear what the man himself, what Bemba himself has to say. His lawyer said that the priority for his client is obviously to return and spend some time with his family that live here in, in Belgium. So at the moment, we don't know too much about it. Remember, he's been incarcerated for 10 years now, so he may have other ideas about his future. We don't know, but he is only 55, so we'll have to wait and see. As you say, he still has a lot of support, especially in the DRC. We will expect some kind of party. We, every time sort of Bemba cases have come up, we've seen supporters of his pouring out onto the streets, wh wherever the sort of relevant location may be. So we may see some of that in the coming days or weeks, depending on what's announced and what, hap what happens. But as you say, his release certainly will raise questions about where he fits into the political matrix in the DRC if he does want to return to take over that. Now, on a side note to this as well, it's important that there's a, a lot of questions are being raised at the International Criminal Court. The prosecutor uh, c quoting some of the dissenting judges that wanted his conviction to be upheld, saying that in this case there's been a real major diversion away from the normal code of conduct and the normal uh, s uh, levels of evidence that are needed uh, at the International Criminal Court when the appeals chamber overturned his conviction. So up at the ICC, there's also a lot of work going on and a lot of sort of soul searching, especially for the prosecutor and some of the judges that, that saw this conviction overturned. I mean, as far as the war crimes issue is concerned, is this a precedent setting uh, move from the ICC? Because, of course, we know uh, there are many involved in conflicts that are unfolding as you and I are speaking, uh, who would have uh, at some future date uh, might face very similar charges to Bemba. How is the ICC going to deal with those going forward? 
So this is sort of the nitty gritty of it, and I'll try and take you through it. Essentially what's happened is that the ICC has said that they have absolute concrete proof that when Jean-Pierre Bemba sent his MLC troops into the Central African Republic in 2003 and 2002 to, to quash a uh, coup against the then president, Ange Félix Patas, that those troops are absolutely certain to have conducted war crimes, and specifically as well sexual crimes, so using rape as a weapon against a civilian population, which was very important at the International Criminal Court. It was the first conviction of its kind when he was convicted. Now, that was at the trials chamber. He was given 18 years for those convictions, war crimes and crimes against humanity. But when the appeals chamber overturned this, essentially what they looked at was some of that factual evidence again, which is uncommon for the appeals chamber to do. Basically what they said is that he had done enough he had tried to set up some sort of uh, judicial process to, pros to sort of uh, bring to justice some of the people, the soldiers that conducted these crimes, and that that was enough to prove that he wasn't himself responsible for ordering those crimes. Now, if we go further into this at the International Criminal Court and, and sort of broader trials, then that could be a way that future uh, sort of leaders or people that may conduct the sort of crimes that Jean-Pierre Bemba was accused of committing, that that could be a way for them to get off at the International Criminal Court. Wider again, if we look at things like the, the Yugoslavia trials, etc., what the prosecutors in those trials went for was aiding and abetting. So not directly responsible necessarily for the, uh, what their troops were doing, but if they supplied them with weapons, if they uh, sort of permitted them entry into different places, then they could be tried for aiding and abetting and convicted for that. And I think if that were the case in the Bemba trial, he may not have seen his conviction overturned. Hard to say, obviously, and they're sort of looking into a crystal ball. But uh, that's, that's sort of a, a case, the case that's going on now was so strict on his responsibility for his troops and the appeals chamber decided that he wasn't responsible in the end. I was going to raise up all sorts of legal questions going forward. Jack Parrick, our correspondent in Brussels, on the line there from Belgium.